Well, I'm thankful. And because we're on the eve of Thanksgiving, uh, I'm reflecting. And so what better way to reflect than to teach you something about reflecting? Mark Legue, what are you going to teach us today? <laughs> uh, hi, Eric. Uh, just that, reflections. Um, nice segue there. Uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, be doing a small uh, cityscape with a, like a rainy, wet street where I will be uh, focusing on the way the uh, the reflections, you know, happen and uh, sort of how to uh, how to really observe instead of just sort of doing a cliche of what you think a reflection is. Well, you're the master of reflections. I'm just going to show a little bit of your work here. Um, I mean, the, it it looks easy, but uh, there are certain principles that you've absolutely got to follow, and you're going to teach us some of those principles today so that we can learn about reflections. So why don't we go ahead and get started teaching? All right. Let me just switch over. Here we are. Okay. So uh, because it's uh, relatively brief, uh, the time that I have, I have pre-mixed all my colors. Um, as you can see on my palette. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to begin this one with an overall wash. I don't always start it this way, but uh, I find for reflections, it's good because I can kind of have a, a sort of a, a foundation, uh, to work from. And when I lay it in on my on my which my surface, which is uh, double primed with acrylic gesso, it's just a piece of masonite from the hardware store. And you're uh, painting in oil. I'm painting in oil. That's right. And I assume you're thinning it with uh, something. I'm thinning it with. Uh, it's basically. Uh, uh, is it gambling? Is not not gambling. Uh, Gamsol. Okay. Uh, which is, I mean, it's it's a it's an odor it's an odorless uh, mineral spirit, so it is toxic. But uh, they've managed to uh, they refine it so so much that uh, uh, they've taken virtually ninety nine percent of the toxicity out of it. I'm using what it's called uh, Isosol, the one that I'm using. That's just because I can get it here in Canada. I think they make this one right here in Quebec. Uh, so. Um, sorry, I lost my reference on my iPad over here. Uh, the, uh, where is Photoshop? So you're, are, let me ask you a question while you're looking for okay. that. Are you going to wipe that down or are you going to leave it, uh, like that? I am probably going to wipe parts of it down, but I'm going to leave it, uh, I'm going to leave it like this just for the moment because uh, well, I'm anxious to see what you're going to do. So why don't we do this while you're looking for your reference image? We will uh, get the show officially started. All right, let's okay. do this. Art School Live with Eric Rose. Now, here's your host, Eric Rose. Gobble, gobble. Well, thank you, and uh, welcome to Thanksgiving, almost. Um, I hope you guys are ready for a big Thanksgiving, and you're going to have your, your family and friends with you. I mean, that's what it's all about. <clears throat> I'm going to have my family. I'm really excited about that. My kids will all be here, so it's a beautiful thing. Our guest today is Mark Legue. Mark is a fabulous painter out of Montreal, and uh, you're going to learn about reflections. He's going to teach you that today. <clears throat> we have a prize for you. Uh, you can win a subscription to Fine Art Connoisseur Celebrating 20 Years uh, Digital or Print Subscription. Digital has 20% more content. And all you got to do is leave a comment in the comments section when you're watching uh, live or on replay. We're going to pick from that. And we would love to have uh, a chance to give you something. Our last winner who won the value specs that help you see values, Janet Kirby in Naples, Florida. Congratulations, Janet. We're happy for you. All right. Now, we also have uh, an incredible 
free gift for you. It's 97 Art Secrets. Uh, it's four hours of video. Incredible um, indeed, because we have some master artists on there teaching segments from some of the top videos that we've done over the years, and we think you'd like to have it. 97artsecrets.com slash free. You can subscribe to this program. We're here every day at 12 noon Eastern, five days a week. Weekdays, just go to YouTube and hit the subscribe button. Now we're going to get right back to Mark Lagu. All right, Mark, take it away. Whoops, there we are. All right. Uh, so I just laid in uh, I laid in uh, that large that wash with a uh, rosemary ultimate long flat here. If you want to see, that's what I laid in the uh, the wash with. I uh, I pretty much only use flats. Occasionally, I'll use I'll use a filbert, uh, but almost never. <laughs> Um, okay, so you were asking about when I when I laid in this wash, if I'm going to wipe it down, but I'm going to actually go in. I'm going in now with, uh, it's also a Rosemary uh, Ultimate Flat, a little smaller. This is a 10. That last one was a 12. I'm only working on an 8x10, so 10s and 12 brushes is kind of huge. But in the early stages here, it's, uh, you, you, you know, when you're laying in the washes, you, you want to use the biggest brush possible. Why did you um, pick green as your base color? I don't know. Like, there's almost none in my reference, uh, so I kind of like the, you know, the uh, uh, the push pull you'll get. You know, ideally, some of this green will be showing through at the end. Um, you know, and I can leave it in parts, and even leave it in parts where, if the value of the green is correct, I can. Uh, I can well correct for for the, the the spot where I'm doing. I can uh, ideally leave it there. You know, if you, as much as you can leave that uh, that shows through after, just gives a real sort of like a visual pulse to it. You know, there's a there's an excitement to that that you can't get by adding the green later. You know, it's it's and you kind of got to let it happen. You got to let the the painting kind of dictate to you when and where it's uh, it's best to do that. And another reason I'd say that I didn't wipe down the uh, the green that I, cause it's it's a little unwieldy, but the, the black I'm going in with now, and my black is my French ultramarine, Windsor Newton French ultramarine. That's important because uh, uh, their ultramarine is better than, uh, I don't know, I'd probably use more Gamblin than Windsor Newton, but in the French ultramarine, well, Gamblin, they just call it ultramarine, but it's uh, the, the Windsor Newton one is better by a thousand times. Uh, anyway, uh, but the, like I said, the reason I uh, I want to keep that initial wash really, really uh, unwiped down, so it's just it's really wet. It's almost glistening wet still, uh, is because a I'll I'll be able to scrape out so much better. I'll get to that in a second. And B, in this case, I want my black, which is my ultramarine and transparent earth red, to be influenced by that green. So instead of mixing up a whole batch of that on my palette, because when you start mixing too much, I end up with with uh, too many active brushes, which I will anyway. I mean, I always end up with too many, but this is a way to kind of, I'm kind of mix, letting it mix on the surface. So, and it really helps with unifying everything uh, because the, uh, you know, my, my black, the, the green is kind of being churned up a little bit, which especially if I was going in with opaque, lighter paint right now, I, that's the last thing I'd want. So I wouldn't do that over an area like this, you know, and it is it is drying as as I go here, you know, obviously oil paint takes a long, a long time to dry, but, uh, in terms of once it loses its sheen, you know, it's it's a lot more workable, even if it's still technically wet. So here I'm going in with this is the uh, the uh, Princeton Catalyst Wedge. They, they're very popular. It's uh, this one. This is my favorite one by far because it's got you can see it's got the um, about four inches of flat, and then probably about an inch and a half of flat on the 45 degree here. So it's it's pretty much the only scraper I need because it's very versatile. 
So here I'm going in and, uh, you know, this almost certainly won't be the final word on the, re on the reflections here, uh, but it's, it's the best way for me to, you know, place them and, uh, you know, uh, with place them and get it back to the surface so that if I do go on with opaque white, the surface will be very welcoming of that, if that makes sense. Well, you're able to get it really right down to the bare canvas. That's especially, like I said, because I didn't scrub it down, if I scrubbed it down, I'd still be able to get it, you know, but there it would probably be, I'd get 70% off as opposed to like 95% off this way, you know? Right. So like I said, these these that probably aren't going to be the final word on this, but I really want to be mindful and careful about placement. I'm really squinting my eyes here and and looking for, you know, it, in given that it's a sort of a three quarter perspective, there is the, you know, are the headlights aligned? And even to take it one step further, I, I'm not trying not even to think about them as headlights. They're just they're just the lights in this. And when I, I use the term lights in this case, I don't mean physical lights on the car. I mean my lights versus my darks in the painting, you know, which is just how I always want to approach. You know, I'm, I'm being specific about teaching reflections here, but it's still my the thrust of everything I'm going to talk about has to do with painting principles, you know, and in this case, it's just I happen to be doing reflections. And if I if I keep that discipline of of uh, of the of the painting principles, then it doesn't matter that it's reflections. You know, it's uh, it's uh, the kind. You know, you can paint anything. It's just uh, the important thing is to. It, it's important to try to separate out from the what that you're painting. So now I, I'm bringing it back to. Uh, you know, if you can see those areas in my in my reference around here, uh, where it's it still would be considered a dark value, but it's just a little lighter. So here, if I go in with my paper towel, it's much more subtle, obviously, than, than really kind of squeegeeing it out with the, uh, with the, uh, the color shaper thing. So there's a question, light. Mark, from Barbie in, in Southern California's high desert saying, I'm assuming these techniques would also apply to acrylics. I don't think so because once that acrylic is on there and it dries, you can't wipe it out. Yeah, no, it absolutely would not apply to acrylics. I mean, unless I guess unless you went really fast, but I, I've never actually even. I used to work with acrylics a long time ago. That's one medium I've I've never picked up again, unless it was to maybe to, to uh, you know, there were times when I would maybe mix it in my gesso uh, before putting on or use putting a wash over over uh, a panel, you know. Um, but to actually paint with it, I don't. So, so I, I would imagine even if you laid in your acrylic washy like that, unless you got to it right away, and even if you did, I don't think it would pull up the same way that uh, that the oil does. Um, I mean, I, I assume water mixable oils were would. I, I haven't used, tried those in years and years either. I, I find I'm I'm satisfied enough that the you know the Gamsol kind of thinners are are safe enough that um you know and i, I wear gloves uh, in, you know um cuz i mean the gloves i guess are more for like the cadmium paints and things uh which i'm actually using less and less of cuz they they seem to be harder and harder to find uh the only cadmium on my palette right now i believe is this cadmium yellow deep uh yeah, because I'm not using a cad orange anymore. I mean, that kind of comes and goes. I just found it a little redundant, given that my what used to be my cad red, this is actually bright red. Um, I was more most recently using that. That's one area where the uh, the Gamblin, I, I like the Gamblin cadmium red better than the Windsor Newton. Uh, but the most recent tube I had of it, it was, I don't know, it just wasn't behaving that well. And it's super expensive. So I went back to the bright red, which I had been using, and it's it's fine. It's uh, it's like it's a series one, I think. So it's the cheapest, and you can get it in the big two hundred ml tubes. And honestly, I don't uh, 
I can't even tell a difference between it and the cadmium. So you guys don't celebrate Thanksgiving in uh, Canada, do you? Well, we do. We just did six weeks ago. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Do you call it Thanksgiving? <laughs> yeah, we call it Thanksgiving. Okay. Okay, this this is a this is an older rosemary brush that see I put uh I put silver duct tape on it. That lets me know that this isn't to be used with paint, it's just to be used uh as a kind of smusher brush, for lack of a more technical term. But um and that is because it it just got too it just worn. got it. Yeah, the the corners got kind of worn off it, uh, as you can see, which is a good thing for this. I don't want the corners, you know, the where I why I like that when I'm laying in paint, I want to have the, the sharp edges on the on the brush. Uh for this sort of thing, I, I don't want that. So but I wouldn't I like if I find if to do this with like a large filbert, there's just it comes too much to a point. I want to still have a broad area. Um, so yeah, I'm really just trying to, uh, trying to, uh, establish the big areas here. That's why I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not quite ready to go in with opaque paint, but very shortly I will be, um, I mean, one reason I guess is that, you know, there's time constraints here, but even, even still, I, I, you know, once, because I don't want to get into too much detail at this point, I'm just kind of prepping my surface for when I go in with the, uh, with the, uh, the opaques. Um, but that doesn't mean, you know, it's loose. Yes, but it's, it's, uh, don't, don't let loose get, sort of confused with with uh with sloppy you know or just do whatever kind of thing you know uh, like if anything my my focus and my my sense of purpose is is more heightened now than it will be when i'm uh when i'm laying in uh the the opaques not that i'll be like just uh you know, haphazardly laying it in, but I, I guess because this, this at this stage, it's there's not much to to distinguish this from working in watercolor, where and you know if you know anything about watercolor, you you have to you have to be alert, you have to be focused, and and you also have to sort of let it be the master. You know, um, this is a little more forgiving in that I can what I'm doing here, kind of like pulling out, laying back in, pulling out again. You can't do that with watercolor. You can pull out a little bit, but you kind of only get one kick at the can with that, you know? Uh, and even then, you know, you can never pull it back to like the way I did on the those lights there, you know? Um, so, so another right. question is yep. uh, from Robin Marshall, do you use hard canvas boards to get a better scraping for reflections? Yes, absolutely. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a masonite panel which is just that this, I mean, I guess it can also be called hardboard or something like that, but uh, I get it at the hardware store, the big you know, four feet by eight feet. And they cut it there just so I can get it in my car. And then I cut it smaller when I get home. Uh, and I put two coats of acrylic gesso on it. Um, yeah, it's, it's great. The, the really hard surface. I'll work up to I, I'll go up, up to about as large as 30 40 with the uh, with the gesso uh, with the uh, the uh, masonite boards after that I'll go to stretch canvas um, which you know I, I prefer working on the the hard board but the, the stretch canvas has its pluses too that I kind of like and when I'm more like I don't have a choice in the matter when I'm doing a 40, 60 or something, you know, the, to, to have that on panel, it would be so impossible to ship and so heavy and so, uh, 
Um, okay, so I'm going to get right into uh, some opaques now. Um, so just tell everybody again what that device is. Somebody said, is he using a rock? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, uh, the, it's called the Princeton Catalyst Wedge. Uh, part of it, the art stores. Yeah. yeah. Well, other no, ones, no, no, Black no. Friday, you'll get a deal. Like they have sort of gimmicky ones like this one here, you know, where if I wanted to uh, to get like a, a zebra stripes there, you know, but I, I, I never grab for it, but it's kind of neat. It's kind of fun. Maybe I'll incorporate that into the work. I love uh, art supplies. Yeah, it's it's fun. That is one. Uh, that is one sort of uh, downside about the Canadian world is that it's just we, there's some things we just can't get. It, it, probably more and more we can now, um, and it's much more expensive. But uh, yeah, I mean, I used to way back in the day, long before uh, online was a thing. I used to love to go to Pearl Paint in New York City. Like that was the uh, that was mecca for art supplies. Yeah. Then they went out of business. Yeah. I guess they couldn't compete with the online uh, thing. Got to keep up. And I mean, sorry? You, you have to keep up. Yeah. Okay. So, um, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to start kind of with the focal area but work it down into my reflections because everything back here will be, will be secondary if I get to it, you know, because this really is about the reflections. So I'm going to, I'm going to sort of start there, but I, by starting at the hood of the car, but everything's going to, you know, I'm, I'm going to be doing working everything sort of simultaneously here. So, uh, but the, my most important consideration right now, though, regardless of what I'm painting, is that I'm I'm looking for where my connections are, and that all you know, uh, it's all about if I can eliminate edges, and by edges I mean you know where where a dark meets a light, or sometimes it's where a mid a dark mid meets a light mid value. Um, the more of those you can eliminate, it makes it makes the the ones that you keep uh, all that much more valuable, uh, you know. And obviously, you know, if this area is a part, you know, at least my secondary focal area, I'm trying to, uh, you know, and there, I'm gonna leave it for now, but there's an example of that green I was telling you about. It has nothing really to do with, with the windshield you see in the photo reference, but the value is, pretty close so uh you know maybe i'll just just sort of disrupt it a little bit and then go back in it was just a little harsh but i'm you know it's nice if i can preserve some of it um, okay so Yeah, see, like I, those scrapes for the the headlights here were kind of more or less placeholders, so I don't want I don't want them to show through. Uh, so if you guys are enjoying this, make sure to leave a heart or a comment and uh, spread it to other people. People would love to see Mark. I'm loving it. Yeah, I'm actually, I, I did pre-mix almost all of my colors, but I'm really feeling I need something that's the same value as my as my kind of light blue here, but that's more more of a more of a gray, frankly. Mark and I so just, uh, painted together in the Adirondacks. It's uh, he said the kids were babies, so they're 21 now. So it's, we haven't seen each other for a long time. But he did a beautiful painting of our lean to, which is a a wooden structure out of the in the backyard. Still have that painting, Mark. Oh wow. 
I mean, why wouldn't I, right? <laughs> it's a beautiful painting. So here I've kind of mixed up a, a warmer gray, but I'm kind of, I want it to, this, I want it to kind of mush in with my cooler bluey gray here. Um, and then I can sort of, you know, keep the value the same on them and kind of work them against each other. Make sure to leave comments where you're watching from. Uh, you have a chance to win a prize today, which is a subscription to Fine Art Connoisseur Magazine. This is fun. I'm really just looking for shapes here, you know, that just to cut out that little that little piece where the 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 tires meeting the road. You know, I'm not thinking of it as a tire. I'm just thinking of this nice negative shape, and then there's the little piece in there that kind of allows the uh, you know. Some people call that painting negatively. Yeah, you're you're so um, negative, Mark. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Canadian. I'm supposed to be like. <sighs> More positive, I guess, <laughs> and apologize for everything. Okay, I'm just shoot, shooting some orange into the the ground there, which is kind of bouncing from from over here. So I'm just gonna, like I said, to, just to keep everything fluid and not linger in one area. I'm just gonna kind of suggest this shape here, which happens to be an umbrella, but I don't want to think of it as an umbrella. I'm squinting my eyes, and I just want to. Um, so now when I go back in with this blue that I was using on the, the hood of the car, I, uh, I'm, uh, I'm letting a little bit of it mix in with some of the gray there, which will cause a nice unity everywhere. Okay, yeah, you know what? So much for that, the idea of keeping that green in there. I really want to kind of. We have somebody tuning in from Scotland. Hello, Lucy McDonald. It's a very good Scotch name. So I'm working down here, I'm setting up for when I dr drop in those, the two reflections, which, you know, they're kind of going away, but I've got enough there, like, you know, where I sort of preliminarily placed them. Um, one thing you also get with reflections, you know what, the best, I'm just taking a big knife here, but just to kind of get it back to, um, get it back to a nice surface here so I can lay in those headlights uh, without having to worry about the uh, like getting all kind of picking up what's underneath there. Hello, Waterford, Ireland. Welcome. I'm going back in there. I've still, I've still got this brush that has no white in it. It's just the green that I initially mixed up at the beginning and laid in that wash with. But just sort of, I mean, I'm even feeling a green here. 
And just to kind of tie everything together, squinting down, let's let's run these shapes through there. Um, Oh, I'm going over that thing I did with that weird catalyst wedge thing. So do you ever leave any of that bare, scraped uh, white showing through? Or do you always uh, it? I hope to. You know, like the stuff down here and some of the stuff up there, I, I hope to. It's not, you, can, you kind of put it in as your, sort of as your, you know, as a, guide or kind of a touchstone um and you let the painting decide if it's uh if it's uh worthwhile to to keep it or you just kind of dance around it a little bit you know so you just have little bits of it you know just little bits like that that uh, that stick around Looking beautiful. Uh. Okay, one thing you do have, um, which really, with the, when you're talking about reflections on car, even on the not on the on the brake lights, they're usually red, obviously. But uh, just beside the the um, the bright, which is almost a pure white, usually of this, you you always have an orange or an orangey red on each side of it. That. So I'm sort of setting that up, knowing I'm going in with that white. And then, of course, that's going to pick up. And usually that sits right next to the pure white um, of, the, uh, of the reflection. I'm just going to show a couple of your paintings so they can see that in your paintings. Okay. This is show that little bit of a reflection in those whites. All right. Now we'll understand it. Right. So you know, this is real keen observation right now to get, you know, because cars are they're fairly complex shapes. Uh, and again, like with everything, I I put my brain into it, into such extreme like uh, right brain mode when I'm painting, I think I truly can forget that it's a car, you know, I'm really, uh, I mean, that is the ultimate goal, you know, it's, it's about the shapes. So if you can, uh, if you can sort of uh, split that out, like in your mind, um, I would encourage you guys to try this uh, at home. And I want to mention that Mark uh, is doing online training. And if you go to his website, you can learn about it. He's got a four-part series he's going to be doing, and he's already got the first couple parts done. So you guys should check that out. His website is posted in the comments. Actually, Eric, sorry, it's it's not a four-part thing. It's just uh, it's the same workshop. It's just uh, I, the fourth iteration of it is in, uh, is in March. Oh, I see. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Let some of that orange uh, bleed a little bit. That's what I'm using. I'm back to the uh, the brush that I don't put paint on, but I don't want to just cover up everything, and I don't want to use it to really blend or or make soft gradations. You know, I'm just just doing it to. In this case, I'm doing it to knock down some of that orange because it's maybe a little hot, um, given that you know, the, the unevenness, unevenness of the street and everything, which is what makes the reflections so, so interesting. Um, you know, all the little 
the little potholes and little things in the in the road that uh you know so it makes it uh, it makes it very organic but that's why you you really have to observe uh you know you can't just uh, don't come up with like a cliche that's why you know to say i'm teaching you to paint reflections it's it's like everything else it's it's you know trying to teach you how to see and to interpret um and just just with reflections i find ten people tend to you know just kind of okay just paint the headlights now we'll paint the reflections and it's not the best way to think about it uh because then you're going to get cliched reflections it's it's kind of a, a mix between pure observation and at the same time uh uh interpretation and by interpretation i mean you know that when you let the painting kind of tell you where you're going next as opposed to you know really just just kind of copying what you see okay so got to find my little I try not to have formulas, but this this one here, uh, I really like it uh, for uh, for small shapes. Um, so in this case, I'm going to go into my pile of white here, and uh, what kind of white are you using? Uh, this is Windsor Newton uh, titanium white. Okay. You really want to get that in one shot. Right. But it's got to also be in the right place. Okay, so now for when I come down to actually doing uh, the reflection, there's two ways I could go. I mean, I could go to this is a whatever this one is. I don't know if they have numbers, but see, I have the two of them here. This fatter one. That's probably, this one's probably a quarter inch, this one's probably half an inch or maybe three eighths, whatever. Uh, so I could go in now and kind of go like that and then maybe disrupt it. Or I can go in with, a, with like this kind of knife and do it from the side. You know what, just for fun, since this is a learning thing, I'll do it, I'll, I'll do one one way and one the other. Yay! Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh okay so i'm going in with the uh again because i i've got my i've got this you see this pile of white that's mixed here that's white with uh the uh the mineral spirits thinned out so it's 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 not like watercolor like runny runny but it's it's pretty runny uh but for this sort of thing and i mean i know this isn't going to be the final say but i'm i want for, for the most part to be. So I really want it to land where it needs to land and just kind of. Okay, so I'm definitely gonna go back and, uh, and now for the other one. And usually I would do these both the same way, but I mean, it doesn't have to be, I guess. I'm really kind of, you know, I'm just showing that there's alternatives. So here I'm gonna take this one Put a good a good amount of white on there, you know, pretty thick, but not so thick that it's uh, uncontrollable. And again, I'm, you know, want to put it in the right place. But again, I'm I'm not thinking about a reflection here. I'm thinking about the shape, and I'm just observing and observing and squinting, and maybe I'll. So there, I can kind of. Um, so now that I've got this, I can, you know, start to disrupt this one. So if I disrupt it a little bit, I've also picked up some white. So that's, it's not actually what's there, but it's very plausible that it could be. And that's, you know, you want to be relatively free with your reflections. And you've also got there's those, those lines on the road, which with what I've got here, I can put them in because I don't want those to be pure white because they're, they're uh, 
So you know what, I'm actually gonna go back and take some of my more transparent white that's here because it's thinned out a little, because I want this stripe here to be less, I don't want it to take away from, from uh, the reflections I laid in. And I also want it to be a little uneven because the road's not perfect, you know, and be a little, a little more opaque and a little more white in certain areas and, uh, you know, while I've got it here, I may as well do the other one. But again, like, I don't want to just say, okay, now I did the reflections. Now I'm painting the stripes. You know, that's why it's, I'm kind of, uh, you know, you try to break it up. And now I'll instantly go in there. And uh, you know what, there's some nice, just because there's, you know what, there's, I'm actually going to in the headlight that's on this one right here that one i laid in with the the not not uh, straight out of the tube i mean it was pure white but it was it was mixed a little bit with the uh with the uh the mineral spirits so i can see you out there on rainy days with your camera just trying to grab scenes like this oh it's uh, there's nothing like it i mean i live in the suburbs so sometimes it's like it's there's a nice downpour happening and i have to decide am i driving into the city because <laughs> chances are it's not going to be there anymore you know and uh, and i've had terrible luck in new york city i used to go there all the time it's you know it's probably my favorite city visually certainly and uh I would go there, I'd spend the night, I'd, I'd do sh shooting in the in the morning, in the afternoon, at night, and I never was there when there was a good solid downpour because the reflections, they just don't last. You know, if, it, yeah. if there's a good downpour, li literally three minutes after, the reflections are nothing like they are when it's actually raining. Um, except that one time, the most recent time I was in New York, but I was there, I wasn't there alone like I normally am when I'm shooting, I was there with the family and uh we had tickets to a play school of rock i think it was and uh uh sure enough just before the play the the skies opened up and it was the perfect reflections were happening like because the the good downpour and of course i'd left my good camera back at the hotel um, but i did have my iphone which it's not nowhere near as good as my canon but uh it's uh but you had it Sorry, you had it with you, so that worked. No, no, I, I mean, it was back at the hotel, and we were we, we were far from the hotel. No, but even having um, an iPhone, I was, I was shooting, shooting some with my uh, with my phone, but then it was like we got to go to the play now, and it was just oh, I really I, I wanted to not go, but I mean it was with the it was with my wife and two kids, so uh, I kind of had to. So I barely got any good shot. Did anyone family see what first. I did? Oh. <laughs> Sorry? I said family first. Yeah. He said, I'm going to go back, back right next to those reflections and kind of uh, not like paint over them, but just kind of maneuver them a little bit you know because it's a reflection so it's going to have a little bit of you know there's going to be all kinds of little beckley things and little um and it's you know it's a nice thick opaque white there so it's you know the, the paint will really move um restate some of that orange back in there and Here's a question from Francesca. It says, Mark, do you always do Alla Prima painting? Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. And do you do you ever do any plein air painting anymore? You know what? I'm just dying to. I, I did very little this summer. And what I did was just with my little watercolor setup, which is, is fine. You know, obviously it's so much uh um I mean, I like to get out in the snow. I mean, we do oftentimes, not necessarily in January, but, uh, you know, oftentimes in the spring, probably more in the spring than in the fall, you know, you can, uh, you'll have a day where it's maybe like 
two degrees Celsius and uh, it's, uh, you know, it's sunny and it's, uh, it's perfectly, perfectly fine to, uh, to paint on those days. Um, but yeah, there's, uh, it just seems there's always, always excuses and <laughs> to not, you know, well, it takes, it takes effort. Yeah. Oh, come down to the Adirondacks this summer. We'll, we'll plant our paint to your heart's content. We'll go, we'll yeah, go that would be a good, and uh, take some water out on the streets. Yeah. <laughs> So now I'm really squinting down uh, because there's just this nice sort of gray, and I'm letting some of my blue get into it. This nice gray kind of, and I guess it's, I guess it's the reflection coming from the hood of the car. Uh, it's so hard to tell with reflections because everything sort of mirrors. And, uh, but that's why instead of like, I don't even care or need to know what's causing it. And this is a case where, you know, if, if my observation is good, it's going to, it's going to read as, as a, as a believable reflection. So we're going to wrap in about four minutes, Mark. So just want okay. to give a fair warning. All right. gonna drop in some of the stuff that's happening back here it's a, like a fruit stand or something but I can kind of even just pretend and cheat some of that into my reflection down here even though I don't see it there but that's the thing with reflections is you can you know you can then fake it a little bit just for the sake of the uh, for the sake of the painting Just suggest a little bit at that red awning back there. How fun. I'm just sort of carving things now. I'm still using big brushes, even though I'm, you know, at the later stages. I'm just trying to find the right negative shapes and then what are the best edges to lose so that it reads, but it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, you know, cause for too many little distracting details. Uh, that's the thing people always, you know, kind of, uh, kind of, think you know you just start with your big brushes and you work down to your smaller ones which is true to a certain extent um but i you, like it's, it's never a bad time to go back with a bigger brush right. and and only you know uh really deal with the big pieces because the if they're if your big pieces are good the little ones take care of themselves and to the extent that you actually need them at all you know This is terrific. Any final words of advice, Mark? Uh, do a lot of beginnings. Uh, you know that that the question about uh, do I work a lot of uh, in Ala Prima? Um, to me, that's the beauty of Ala Prima is a lot of beginnings. That's why I do a lot of uh, you know I I always have a sketchbook with me. I'm constantly drawing uh, because you want to. You want to, there's no better practice than starting something, you know, and, and I don't even mean to do, do like preliminary drawings for, for paintings later. No, just do the drawing for the sake of the drawing and, and, you know, it's just see values, see values, see values. And uh, 
whether you're painting or drawing, it's all the same thing. You know, it's uh, see the big pieces and uh, and uh, lose a lot of edges. This has been so much fun to watch this all come together. You are brilliant. I'm kind of making half making this up and half going by stuff that's there now. But, you know, I, the stuff that's in the back there, I, I don't want to have it. I don't want it to have more more uh, purpose than it deserves, you know, because the uh, it's the front part. That's the uh, it's the uh, well, the reflections and the, the hood of the car and things that are the uh, the important things here. Still trying to keep a little of that green happening in there. While trying to sort of simplify the area. Best way to do that is go back in with the... Uh, see here, I'm just trying to tie things together, not, not separate things. How fun. I want to remind you guys that we are here every weekday at 12 noon. We will not be here on Thanksgiving Day. I don't think so, but... Uh, Subscribe on YouTube. Just go and look up Eric Rhodes or Art School Live on YouTube. Mark, thank you so much for today. You're really All right. This. All right. Thumbs up and applause for Mark. All right. You take care. Thanks, Eric. All right. Happy well, Thanksgiving. Absolutely. Absolutely fabulous. Thank you again to Mark Legou. You can find him. We'll put his website up for you in the comments one more time. A couple of little things. Hang with me because I've, I've got a big announcement. The first big announcement is that um, we have uh, we have this trip to Japan that sold out. It sold out in four days. Uh, it was just like everybody wants to go to Japan and paint plein air. We're painting every day three cities of Japan. It's a luxury VIP kind of level trip. It's spectacular. And we have been begging, begging, because we're going cherry blossom season, so it's very hard to get additional rooms. We've been begging our travel partners to get us more rooms and to get the ability to take a few more people. Well, we just heard from them. I just posted this last night. We just heard from them that they can get seven more people in. Part of that is because we had two people cancel because somebody had an illness issue. So seven new seats just opened up for our sold-out painting trip to Japan. Just go to plenairjapan.com. I recommend if you want to do this, I'm not going back. And this is, you know, you could do it on your own, but it's not the same because uh, you're going to be painting with friends. And we have a lot of different things lined up, special tours, some art museums. Uh, we're going to go to a paint factory. We're going to paint every day got great restaurants. Everything is, is all done for you. All you got to do is show up, all right? One, one price is everything. It's actually a pretty good price when you think about all the food, hotels, everything included except for airfare. So uh, go to paint Japan, our plan air, excuse me, plan air Japan.com and check that out. Also, we have a new release. Uh, as you know, we release two or three videos every month. Uh, this one is painting wildlife, birds and waterfowl with Ducton. Dustin Van Wachel, and uh, it's spectacular. You're going to want to check that out. And tomorrow, Black Friday, we have some of our uh, incredible tiles at PaintTube.tv off up to 50% in some cases, and that is coming up for Black Friday and Cyber Monday to go to PaintTube.tv. Of course, PaintTube uh, has uh, hundreds, we have over 600 courses from top art instructors, 
world's top artists, high quality, pro professionally produced. And so uh, make sure to check those out. And last but not least, actually, a couple of things. A uh, plein air convention is coming up in North Carolina. Uh, Great Smoky Mountains. We're going to paint Biltmore Estate and the Smokies, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And so do that. And then we also have Watercolor Live coming up in January. So again, thank you to Mark Legu. Thank you, everyone. I, uh, you know, I, I just love doing this. It to me, as an artist, to be able to watch somebody paint every single day, five days a week for an hour, uh, it it is just a gift. It is so wonderful. I'm so thankful for all the hundreds of artists who have been on this program. Everything that we've ever done is on the YouTube channel at Art School Live. Uh, there's been hundreds and there's been literally has been millions of views. Um, some shows have had as many as 250,000 views. I am so grateful to each of you for, for allowing us to do this for you and, and for, for being there for us and spreading the word and letting others experience this. We have heard literally from thousands of people. Um, we've heard people who've said they, they discovered painting, had never believed that they could do it. They watched these shows and have started painting. We've had people say they've come back to painting after doing it when they were kids. Uh, we've got every imaginable story, and we'd love to hear your stories. And make sure you email me, eric at plenairmagazine.com. That would be helpful. I'd love to hear your story. But I, I really, truly am grateful. Um, our whole goal at Streamline, which is my company, is to uh, inspire you, to teach you, to give you the techniques, and to give you experiences. Experiences like our convention, our retreats, um, to teach you through our, our, um, our art instruction videos and our online events, and to inspire you with our magazines and our seven newsletters, or two magazines. Uh, we just love doing this for you. So thank you so much and have a really terrific Thanksgiving. God bless you guys. And we will see you on the flip flop. Bye-bye.